and welcome to the MMO Report, population 9,780. I'm your host, Casey Schreiner, and we have a very special treat for you this week. Since the release of Warhammer Online, Age of Reckoning is quickly approaching, I sent a crew out to Mythic Entertainment in Fairfax, Virginia, to get the inside scoop on this massively anticipated title. Tonight, we bring you part one of our two-part Warhammer Online launch special. We got an exclusive tour of Mythic's offices from creative director Paul Barnett, by far the funniest slimy bastard I have ever met. Uh, via video, at least. Enjoy. I'm Paul Barnett. I'm the creative director for Mythic Entertainment. We used to be EA Mythic. We got rid of the extra letters. We're making Warhammer Online. It's an MMO. You know, loads of people online doing things in their basements, being good to their mums. We're going to show you all the people, what they do, how they do it, how they earn money, and why you should be in the computer games industry. It's going to be great. Come on, quick, this way. So these here are pictures, good pictures, put up by well-meaning people, but they don't really show off our artwork, and they don't really scream, Whoa! Isn't it great to be in computer games? We're going to go on a little journey showing you how we got from that to stuff that's a bit more crazy. So there we were with our boring pictures, and I thought we need to do something. So I went off to Evil Marketing and got hold of all our posters. I then cut them up, got myself a canvas, slapped them all down. This actually is all our posters. Down here is a little orky dwarf you can see, and all the other bits have got the different faces, the different heads, the rest of it. And I then went Pollock-tastic on it and made it crazy. I then came in, removed the dull one, and hid it, and just hung this picture up. And quite rightly, uh, the boss came down and said, have you gone insane? What do you think you're doing? And I said, well, I'm trying to make the pictures look a little bit more exciting. And um, he said, we'll do something else. Don't do this. And that's how I managed to get a wall painted black. We'll show you that in a minute. Changed us forever. So what we did is we con convinced the boss to give me some money. We then painted the wall black, yeah, because there's enough ba mythic beige around here. We then went off and got the artist, the actual artist, to pick the pictures that they liked. Not the ones marketing liked, the one the artist liked. Then we got them to set how big they wanted it to be, printed it on super high quality paper, then we took it to a museum framing shop and had them all framed for a minor fortune. Then we put them higgledy-piggledy on this wall because we thought it was a much more joyous way of showing off the art. Remember, the concept artwork is the beginning of the imagination. It's when everything really starts, and you're never really going to see it because they get turned into models with polygons and textures. But by putting it up here and showing them that we love and care for them, it shows we give a damn. It also got us a black wall, which is really, really cool if you've got that, you know, goth emo side of yourself going. So, what's it like being in, in the world of computer games? Let me show you. First, you have to have man dolls. <laughs> Man dolls are one of the prime ingredients to allow you to have creativity and vision. I mean, we call them posable, collectible, action, dolls for men. So the love of toy soldiers drives what we do. It's where the Warhammer world comes from. We let people bring them in, paint them, and display them. This one's here. We've got a cabinet. In fact, it's a bit of a shame he's not here, because currently he has a bright blue moustache. But you've got to be careful. The fanaticism that drives you to paint miniatures, the thing that makes you understand how great Warhammer is, also leads to other habits. For instance, <laughs> an excessive use of crazy weapons. I mean, you, you don't want to get these people angry. I mean, you know, never tell them that, you know, a certain version of Star Wars isn't as good as another certain version of Star Wars. You'll just end up wounded. Caffeine delivery systems are one of the core mechanics of figuring out whether you're going to make it as a creative director. But let me show you something we did getting the design started really, really early on. Um, what you're going to do with the game is you've got to find its voice, and in uh, Warhammer, it was a literal finding of the voice. So we have these races, orcs, elves, dwarves, they're all basically cliches. Elves, for instance, aren't really elves, they're English posh people, never done a day's work in their life, don't know what dirt looks like. Dark elves aren't really dark elves, they're English posh people what have taken drugs. Lord Byron off his face on opium. Greenskins are actually soccer hooligans, go around wanting to thump everyone, and the dwarves are really the English working class. So, sticking things on walls, people don't believe me, but it really, really does work. This one, for instance, is a quest sample. Now, the quest was literally, get a pie, give it to Mrs. Miggins. And here are all the different ways we've done it. Obviously, for a human, they get the pie, return it, get reward. Straightforward. Evil human gets the pie, puts it in a box, adds cod Latin phrases, skulls, poisons pies, returns it, cackles. Dwarves, English working class, gets a pie, checks it for gold, finds it empty, sells it for beer money, not really interested in pies. Greenskins poo in the pie, eats it, poos in it again, 
decides to kill the person who pooed in the pie. Not very bright. Um, chaos, obviously they rape the pie, then wear it as a hat, and the pie grows a tentacle, because it's all quite chaotic. Um, the elves will ignore this menial task, and my all-time favourite, the Dark Elf, who betrays the pie and then whines that the Dark Elves are the rightful owners of the pie tray. At one point, we were going to have halflings in, and the text for that read, Pie? Burp. What pie? Oh, I don't remember a pie. Nom, 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 but now I'm full. So here we are, about to find a creative director's natural habitat. Where do they lurk? Where do they hide? How do they get things done? These are here because actually office furniture is really dull. But if you sit down here, people will relax and they'll sit next to you and you can actually talk things through. And design is one of those things that makes people really uncomfortable and excitable. And they get all pent up with frustration. But if you can make them sit down and enjoy themselves, they go, oh, really? I hadn't thought about it like that. We also have here is an enormous wall. And on this wall is lots and lots of pictures, generally of hardware and games. And um, it's all the games that I've played, or I like, or I know about. It's a Dragon 64 computer there. Never even heard about that over here, I don't guess. Um, and this is because games are so rich and so varied and so complicated, and they've been around for such a long time, that there's a wealth of information to plunder. When I first had to explain Warhammer to Americans, I came up across a problem, and that is American optimism. You see, Americans are ultimately optimistic. They can understand anything. Difficulty in the Middle East? We can fix that. And so there I was saying, Warhammer World is rich, it's varied, it's interesting, and they would nod agreeably and then not get it. So I realized I had to find something to explain it to them. And then I found out that you have Batman, and Batman is Warhammer. See, what's great about Batman is, if you say to someone, how old is Batman? They don't know. If you say, how tall are his ears? They don't know. What's his birthday? What color are his eyes? Is his cape blue or black? It changes, it mutates, but the basics of Batman never change. Bloke, Gotham, parents, Joker, toys, butler, I'm English, always get the butler in. Um, and he, he alters, sometimes he's made of Lego, little yellow hands, and his head just pops off. That doesn't mean Batman's hands are yellow, it just means they're yellow when he's Lego. And it's the same thing with Warhammer. Warhammer is this rich and wonderful world full of chaos and monsters and magic and mayhem and fighting and grudges and uh, hatred and, and fire. It's not just the little toy soldiers. It's not just the novels. It's a wealth of joy. And so an American's job is to realize that the Warhammer world is as varied as the Warhammer of Batman's world. And that we're making the best type of Warhammer as an MMO. Just as you make the best type of Batman. Which right now is the Dark Knight, which is awesome. So what you've got here is the very first collector's edition in all its great glory. Now the collector's edition doesn't really make mythic a lot of money. It's actually no better off for us than selling a normal edition. But that's not the reason it exists. It exists because fanatics, fans, the faithful, the people who really, really want to be part of our game, want to take part of it to such an extent that they want extra bits and pieces, artifacts, relics. They want the art book. They want the comic. They want the miniatures. They want all the little bits and pieces that show that they're really, really committed. So computer games, it's full of people who are quite quiet who actually do a lot of hard work, people who actually had to learn their stuff, most of it from a school of hard knocks. Play more computer games, go to good websites, watch more G4. Play more computer games, think about them more, review them. Here's a quick, why don't try these out? Try writing the design document for Tetris. It's harder than you think. And if you want a puzzling question, try this one. You're in charge of the game of chess. What rule are you going to change? What are you going to change it to? And why did you do it? If you can do all that, you're on the way to being a designer. And then you can come and work here. Well, that's it for part one of our two-part Warhammer Online launch special. But before we go, I have to keep a promise I made to all of you last week. We held a haiku writing contest with our friends over at Perfect World International with the five best entries earning 5,000 zen, the currency in Perfect World. While we posted the winning poems over at g4tv.com slash MMO, as well as a couple honorable mentions. So I'd like to say thank you to Capblasto12, Saddam, Dark Falls, Matt Douglas, Hulk Hogan, Shalna Real, and Cryptoker. Your understanding of syllables and the English language have earned you kudos. So until next time, I'm Casey Schreiner. This is the MMO Report. And uh, as I'm sure you all know, Rock Band 2 will be coming out very soon. And uh, my apartment is totally, completely done and ready for it. I've got my uh, guitar, I've got my bass, I've got uh, a fancy keyboard in the back, two drum kits bespangled with ivory tusks and chimes, uh, and a box full of scarves. 
Uh, you should probably look for the video of me on YouTube um, playing all the members of Fleetwood Mac. Should be up by Friday. On G4, you learn stuff like this, folks.